Hey everybody, Mark Lewis Wagner here with Drawing on Earth. We're going to talk about portrait painting today. Portrait painting is a lot about getting the light right. So there's this whole thing we're going to talk about called Rembrandt's Triangle, which is how you light something on a diagonal. It's not like this light, but I'll show it to you. And um, so we're going to look at a variety of, of portraits of how to paint portraits. So I've got a, a couple here of pieces. And then what I'm doing is I'm doing a self-portrait. So uh, I took a picture. Um, I'm actually going to shave my beard off in a couple of weeks. So I wanted to get myself as this bearded artist. So I set up the light. You can kind of see the Rembrandt's triangle here. I'll uh, illustrate this in a moment. And then what I'm doing is I printed it out and I am going to transfer um, this onto a board. Okay, so Rembrandt's triangle is a way of lighting something. I have an old light table here. Um, you could also eventually use a window to put some tape on it, when, what we're going to do. But what you want to do is you want to set up your model. And the way that the light is, the light's going to come across this direction. And as it cuts across the face, it's creating this piece of light. So that's Rembrandt's triangle. It's the best way of how to light a portrait. All the famous paintings and portraits, they have this level of lighting to it. Because what it does is it, it's gonna let me turn this space, right? I wanna turn the space, I wanna make this dimensional. And so, um, by having like, so, so like this part of my space is in the light. And then this part of it is in shadow. And then I'm going to be able to paint that, and that will really get me my, my form that turns around. <clears throat> so what I have here, then, is I treated this in Photoshop to make it something called cutouts. And then what it's going to allow me to do when I look at my reference, which I'll show you, is that I'll be able to see one, two, three, four, five values easily. And so that's kind of what I'm going for, are some of these blocked-in shapes. And so... What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on transferring this image onto my board. And so the way I'm gonna do this is I'm using my pencil and I'm using a heavier pencil, it's a 4B. And I'm just doing the lines where I know there's information. Like I don't have to do the whole shape. What I have here is I took my, I have a treated board, right? This is that masonite. And I've already mixed some, some um, colors to make it uh, something that's going to already relate to my photograph. So the colors that I have that I'm going to work with are um, I've got a, a dark brown, it's a burnt umber, and I have a burnt sienna, which is kind of um, so I've got black, umber, burnt sienna, and then kind of um, a raw sienna, right? It's almost like it goes into a... and I won't use this as much, and then I have white. So the main thing is that I'm going to kind of keep it. One of the ways to, to make this work is that I'm, I'm limiting the colors that I use. And I'm, I'm, the only thing I'm doing is I'm light, lightening them in value in one sense. So what I do with acrylics is that I underpaint or I block in my, my painting kind of as fast as I can. I will block this in. Um, and then, um, then I do a second pass. So then I come back in with detail. So you always save the detail till later. And um, I will actually uh, use oil paints then as my second pass. And I'll talk about that. If you don't have oils, it's just, this is, you can do everything with acrylics. Okay, so for those who are still with me, who are oil painting, um, we're going to move into that. And if you are acrylic painting, you'll just stay with acrylics. So what I have here is <clears throat> I have my underpainting done in acrylics, and it's, a, it's really about just blocking it out. The idea is to get rid of everything that's underneath other than I put a neutral value already underneath so I was able to leave that. So that saved me kind of some time and it also unifies the field with the whole piece. 
So what I have here is my reference, right? I'm still gonna kind of work off of this. I have a laptop here, I could use that if I want to, but this gives me enough information because I'm really just looking at planes and uh, the, the idea is to kind of try to paint it and forget that you're even doing a portrait and just work on the painting, trying to try to paint with shapes and stuff. And so then I have oil paints and because I'm doing a portrait, all I really need is a white and a black. I've got a yellow ochre, uh, cadmium red, uh, permanent orange, burnt sienna, umber, and then I've got this really nice pink. It's called Brilliant Rose. Um, really, really like this um, by Old Holland. Um, yeah, it's a great, it's a great pink. And then I have some liquid and this helps my paint dry faster and I can glaze with it. So I've, I've got this liquid and then I have turpentine. I have an odorless turp. So I'm gonna try to keep my, my toxic things down. Once I'm into oil paints, now I'm toxic. Um, the main thing with oil paints and acrylics is that you can paint oils on top of acrylics, but you can't paint acrylics on top of oils. It's the way that the oil is and it won't seal with the acrylics on top of it and they'll either peel off or just bubble off what, like, like uh, immediately. I'm gonna glaze over the whole piece with kind of a burnt umber. So that's actually an important thing to pay attention to. I'm gonna glaze over the whole piece. I might even glaze over the whole painting. Um, and it's called unifying the field. So when I glaze, it's gonna coat everything and pull it all together. And then I'm gonna keep painting on it.